The scene opens where someone grabbed a rock with his hand. It was the protagonist who hopped over the mountain and realized that finally, he was there at last. He looked at a mansion and wondered if he'd chosen that school, he wouldn't be dying anytime soon. It had been a long road for him. The scene then shifted a few years back when he was a kid of six years old. His name was Rintero. While he was running, he told his father to take that ride next. His father replied that it was dangerous to run. As Rintero reassured him that he was fine, suddenly his head hit a girl's melons, and all his ice cream fell on them. She exclaimed, it's so cold. His sight went to her melons, and he got completely shy, unable to utter a single word from his mouth. Right after, his father came running to them and said, I'm terribly sorry. The girl replied, I'm perfectly fine. Then, he told Rintero to apologize, but he realized Rintero was sitting on his knees, feeling very uncomfortable in his chest. The next scene shifted to the hospital. His father asked, is that Henaisai Tashli Aiju syndrome? The doctor agreed and commented that it was also known as the Hentai syndrome and an extremely rare illness residing within Rintero. Hearing this, his father couldn't believe it. So the doctor said, the Hentai syndrome wouldn't cause any problems if he lived his life normally. He then asked if that was true, and she further added, it's extremely dangerous when he's naughty. As he questioned her about not arousal, she commented, when all of his blood gathers in one point, the burden in his heart would rapidly rise. However, if he could control his desires, it was possible to restrain the outbreaks. He then got a bit tense and asked, how could that be possible? Does it mean Rintero would forever be forbidden to have relationships and die a virgin? The doctor replied, I'm afraid that, at the current level of medical knowledge, that's the only way. Right after, she faced her laptop and told them, wait a moment. If I remember correctly, I have some more detailed information. Rintero then got so excited and high that, his father pushed his face down and stated, that was a close one. You should be more careful. Rintero replied, I was stupid. I'm so sorry for that. Afterwards, while his father was carrying him over his shoulder, the doctor exclaimed, I'm terribly sorry. I'm sure Rintero's life will be full of hurdles. His father declared, she might be right. However, if someone knows the way, it's easy to jump over those hurdles, and I will teach him that. The scene then shifted near a forest. Rintero questioned, where am I? His father answered, we're in the deepest part of the forests of Mount Fuji. It's called the Quiet Shore. Nobody knows it, and it's the place where I used to train when I was young. He told him, we need to stop those outbreaks of the hentai syndrome at any cost. Rintaro agreed. Then he said, you'll need a heart that won't move, no matter what, the skills to be able to act in any situation, and a body that's able to carry them both. By saying all of this, he meant about the skills to clear his mind and a silent and serene heart. That's what he would need. But Rintaro got confused, so his father exclaimed, it would be harsh, but it's all for your sake. Suddenly, Rintaro got excited and commented, I have the resolve. I want to become a strong man, a man like my own father. That's what I've always thought. Later on, Rintero started his training to clear his mind and make his heart a silent and serene heart. He lifted up a big rock and threw it so far, then started practicing to balance his body by standing on top of a small rock and maintaining his whole body balance by using just a single hand. As his father then declared that he could only say that he had mastered the skills he had learned when he would be able to use them in school and his everyday life. The scene then switched to a footbridge where Rintero was walking up the stairs with his friends and one of the guys asked him if it had been a while, and if he was still camping with his old man, to which he replied that he could say that. Suddenly, a group of girls came there, an army of Gravier sisters from high school, as one of the girls commented that it was a burst of eroticism right off the morning and one of the guys wondered if he might bump into those melons by any chance. Rintero commented that he was right as he thought about a melon touch by any chance. He clarified that it was absolutely outrageous and it would be a disaster if they touched each other when they passed them. So he decided that he should first calmly take a few steps back and then wondered about a pincer attack. He looked at his surroundings and started focusing on clearing his mind with a silent and serene heart. Then he made the use of crow-style branch keep so he could hide himself from the girls. He thought in his mind that he would avoid all forms of eroticism, and that was how ten years had passed by clearing one's mind completely and obtaining a silent yet serene heart. That was like a full moon reflected in the surface of a blue pond. It expressed stillness and that meant a silent and serene heart to clear one's mind. As his father then announced that it concluded everything he could teach him and he did a good job in during those 10 years, on which Rintero replied that it was all thanks to him and he extended his thanks for training him that long. Hearing this, his father commented that it was all thanks to his own skill as it was all his skill that made him master the art of Koisogetsu, 
and he further added that he was not to be arrogant as no one knew what would happen, to which he agreed and stated that he was always right as he would be below that beautiful moon. So he then made a promise to his father that he would never touch women or let them touch him and clarified that it was the promise of womanliness. He further declared that he would keep that promise until he died. And the next day it was finally the first day of his high school life, on which his father replied that since he would move to a dorm, they would be unable to meet for a while, but he should do his best. So Rintero then exclaimed that he would be fine because his school would be famous. The next scene then shifted to the largest all-boys school in Japan, named Nango Kuren High School. While he was standing in front of the school, he thought in his mind that if he chose that school, he wouldn't be dying anytime soon but suddenly. He noticed someone's presence there so he asked who was there and one of the guys realized that he was able to see through their hiding skill, and it was not bad to which Rintero agreed and replied that he also saw their feet. As he then further questioned who they were, the guy replied that they were freshmen and his name was Kusuk while another guy was Tamau. After listening to it, Rintero introduced himself to them and stated that he was also a freshman. He felt so nice to meet them, and then he questioned what they were doing there while hiding. So the guy then asked him if he couldn't figure out that they were checking out the students. As Rintero then got confused about what he meant, the guy commented that he didn't need to hide it, as he questioned if he wanted to be friends with the people there. So he enrolled there as well since that place had all sizes and colors. Rintero then asked about the sizes and colors, and Kusuk answered that it was like face and style, as if they were to date. He would have to check those two first. Rintero then looked at his surroundings and realized that those were the masculine guys whom he was talking about. So he felt weird and claimed that he thought it was perfectly normal. Hearing this, the guy asked what he meant, and he ran away from there by saying that love shouldn't have any shackles. He thought in his mind that it was as expected of the biggest all-boys high school, and realized that there were people like them as well. As he entered the school, he found that there were lots of girls which made him so nervous that he pondered if it was impossible that a mass of girls in an all-boys high school, and though it might be they were boys dressed like girls or if he was dreaming, so he started punching his face. He wondered if he was still unconscious from his training, and then his nose started bleeding because of his own punches, and he felt so tense that he thought why those girls were there. Suddenly, both the guys came and carried him away from there, as Kusuk then announced to not just suddenly stop functioning and Rintero replied that there were girls, on which Kusuk commented that of course there were as Nango Kuren sounds like it would be an all-boys school, but it used to be the biggest all-girls high school in the country since it became co-ed that year. He further mentioned that over 99% of the students were girls, and after listening to it, Rintero couldn't believe his ears, as he then realized that he misunderstood as Nango Kuren sounded like a muscular name but it was not actually an all-boys high school, so he thought if he had put himself in a tight spot, and then he pondered that he completed the entry and he should commence the transfer. So Kusuk then exclaimed that those two were finally going to fight, as one of the girls then questioned another if how many students did she think that she had hurt, and she answered that it was of no matter how strong her enemy was because if there were students being hurt, she would fight to protect them and she would fight without any regrets. Hearing this, the girl smiled and started to not make her laugh as the strong ones would eat the weak ones and that was the law and it was a given that the herbivores die. She then got enraged and blew a kick towards her face, but the other girl was so quick that she protected herself and while she was going to hit her with her weapon, the other girl flipped into the air. Both the girls were having an eye-on-eye -eye fight as Kusuk then declared that they were evenly matched, to which Rintero denied and commented that he was wrong as the black-haired girl had only used her left hand and she hadn't even broken a sweat, as he further added that the way those two fight that was not a simple brawl. So the other guy then asked if he didn't know them as that was common knowledge to anyone who had gone to Nango Kuren Middle School. He mentioned that the first rule of the Nango Kuren High School is that Nango Kuren High School abides by the law of nature, and based on this one rule the Nango Kuren High School was currently a war zone. As Kusuk further commented that currently there were three forces struggling for leadership including third year Kayoyuka, first year Aan, and then there was second year Reno. He stated that those three were with respect due to their enormous strength called dragons and until that time, even if Kayoyuka was on top by a small margin, they were in a complete stalemate but then even if her army was small, Aen made an entrance there so at that time it became a three-way contest. As Kayoyuka commented, urging her to give it her all, she was the type who couldn't get hot with herbivores. So, Aen then blew a kick at her face and Kusuk declared that it was her special move. Afterwards, Kayoyuka held the weapon in her hand and slashed at her straightaway, so all her clothes got ripped, and she fell on the ground. 
As Kusuk extended his thanks for the food, Rintero thought in his mind, that was so close. While the other girls were watching the situation, one of them commented, I didn't know she was that strong. Another girl announced, we need to protect Ayan. But another girl replied, it's one on one. Are you going to interrupt them? So all the other girls ran away from there. Kayuyuka then asked, still hungry as hell? What was all that? Aeon denied it. Right after, Kusuk got worried as he exclaimed, This will turn into a brawl, and they're going to drag us into it. Rintero thought in his mind, That's not good. If I get involved with that kind of army, I could bid my life farewell. And then he declared, Anyway, we need to retreat first. Kusuk asked, Retreat. We're currently surrounded. In the very next second, Rintero came in between both the girls. His sight darted towards Kayuyuka's melons, making him nervous. He then pondered, To think I've seen the breasts of two high school girls up close, and in the worst situation possible. He decided to clear his mind and started focusing on a silent and serene heart. Then, he made use of the art of Koasaugetsu, which led to the creation of a huge beast and built two walls between the girls to stop the fight. Looking at this, both guys were completely stunned. Rintero clarified, that was a close call. Kayoyuka questioned, what did you think you were doing? He replied, actually, that's my question. She commented, still, your technique wasn't half bad. Next time you get in my way, I'll eat you. Then she announced that she had lost her appetite and they should scream, to which all her group members agreed. Rintero then realized Ayan was looking at him. He asked, how can I help you? She bowed down in front of him and requested, please make me your apprentice and teach me your skills. But as usual, his sight went again at her melons, and he flipped back to some distance from her. He further thought, this is a danger zone. Both that school and its students are too dangerous. However, she was amazed to see his way of moving his body, and wondered, lessons so soon already. The students were quite surprised to know about Ayan's request. By the appearance of a man, later to be called Aitenryu, a tiny flash of light honed upon the three-way battle. Thus, the war zone of Nangokuren High School approached the Age of Dragons rioting. However, Rintero wondered, I need to receive my transfer notification. The scene then shifted to the classroom, where Rintero thought in his mind how could that happen, as the situation he most feared actually happened, and he could hear it coming closer as he further clarified it as a definite demise of his life. He pondered that he didn't have the time to get a transfer notification, and then he peeked and realized that there were girls everywhere he looked. He thought that a pack of girls, a flock of girls, a herd of girls, a lot of girls, so Ayan called him his master and asked him if he was feeling bad, to which he replied that he was not her master, and further wondered that there were girls when there were, and ultimately he got confused. He pondered that the situation was too dangerous, and rather than bad, it was more like he wanted to get far away from there. In Jigokuren High School, there were three certain girls who were revered as dragons and fought for hegemony along with their community, further mentioning that those three were the best of the best. After a while, a lady came into the classroom and she announced to the ladies that she welcomed them to their school, and she was their homeroom teacher, Akina. She commented that the school was full of problems, but they didn't easily award those who did their best, so she suggested they try not to be too lazy. And then Ayan called out the master, so Akina asked her if she was Sensoryu Ayan, after Kuguryu Kayuyuka and Ransoryu Reno the third dragon. She mentioned that no one knew how well her group, Ryuzen Paku, could fight against those two dragons, so she hoped that she had made up her mind, to which she agreed. As Akina further stated that her eyes were like that of clear water, and she wished her good luck on her path, to which Ayan extended her thanks to her. She exclaimed that, however, she had to fall in love as well, written as student read as youth and she needed to fully enjoy her springtime of youth, as she then questioned everyone if they all understood, and they all agreed. On the other hand, Rintero was concentrating on having a clear mind, and he thought that he had to get the transfer notification after school, but first he needed to survive the first day, so he focused on a silent and serene heart. Ayan then called out to him and said that he couldn't accept it after all, her apprenticeship. But she found that he was not there, as he made use of his special skills, including Royin no group and Reiku Saku. Looking at his skills, she realized that he was so fast that nobody was noticing him and he asked where he was. Suddenly, a girl threw a huge rock at her, but she jumped away from there to protect herself, and the girl announced that she was full of openings and that was why she should prepare herself. And then the girl took out his sword and tried to slash it at her, but she held it with her hand at once and clarified that it was enough. So the girl told her that she saw, 
and she was happy to know that she didn't neglect her training over summer vacation. To which Ayan replied that she had sharpened her fangs as well, and then a dragon formed out of nowhere which she called him as Makoto. As the girl mentioned that she was not satisfied at that level and she was Ryuzen Paku, the subleader, Turitsu Tree, Makoto, whereas the other girl was Ryuzen Paku's second subleader, Gauhin Keiko. Ayan then got a little angry and told Keiko to not bring huge rocks into the school, to which she replied that she thought it was just the right size to throw at her, and there didn't exist a rock that was just the right size to throw at someone. She further said to forget about that and let's hit lunch, to which she replied that it was not even 10 o'clock yet, as the time between breakfast and dinner was all lunch. Hearing this, Keiko started to at least join her for the 11 o'clock meal, to which Ayan commented that she suggested she quit that one meal per hour lifestyle. She then replied that she was still growing, and Makoto questioned if they had done with their comedy, so Keiko stated that it was right, as Ayan was aiming to be a stand-up comedian after all, to which she completely denied. Afterwards, Makoto exclaimed that she heard she went and became someone's apprentice, so she further questioned what she was thinking, and Keiko also had the same question as she did it without even talking to them first. And then Ayan answered that Kayuyuka's claws were sharp, way sharper than she had imagined, and suddenly her sight went at Rintero, so she said sorry to them as she needed to go. Makoto told Keiko to let her bathe, as she shed two drops of sweat, on which she replied if not again or if didn't they just bathe that morning. So she answered that she would feel gross if she didn't wash the sweat away, and besides, she loved baths. Hearing this, she got a bit angry that she said even more than a certain Shizuka-chan they knew and further asked about Ayan to which she replied that they couldn't overturn something she had already decided, as she then commented that it might be true but she must have had a reason for that apprenticeship, but they needed to see for themselves if that man had what it took to be respected by Ayan. The scene then shifted to Rintero, who was feeling so tense due to his current situation, as he questioned why did she want to learn from someone like him so badly, and these sayings were heard by Ayan who was hiding behind the wall, as she then answered that she didn't know what objective was but she has no intention of taking disciplines. She declared that she couldn't lose and for the sake of that school, for the sake of everyone in Ryuzen Paku she definitely couldn't lose. As Rintero then questioned about couldn't lose or if she meant against that Kayoyuka, so she mentioned that both Kayoyuka and Reno had immeasurable strength. As she further added that those two were a large wall in front of her and she needed to go past that wall using her own strength. And then Rintero thought in his mind about a large wall and the need to surpass using one's own strength. So he exclaimed that he could understand a little but asked if still she hadn't other options like talking or mass transferring as running away was a fine choice as well. And that was why even if she didn't become his apprentice it would be alright. As she then stated that she was no good the way she was at that time and she was so close with him that he got to see through a bra and became so nervous. He screamed that he saw through everything and fell on the ground. Looking at this, Ayan questioned what she was playing around at or if he wasn't dripping wet, as she further requested him to go and use the dormitory bath, on which he mentioned that he was not playing around at all as he was always dead serious. The next scene then shifted to the bathing area where Rintero got so amazed to see its huge size, as he then wondered that if he went and took a disciple, then there was no way he could transfer anymore and besides he was not fit to be a master. A girl then replied that it was not true and he realized that it was Ayan who stated that he was being too humble, and as she was wearing a very small dress, he screamed so loud because of his shyness and nervousness. He asked what she was thinking and followed him all the way to the bath, to which she answered that it was the women's bath and after listening to it, he asked what she meant, and then she answered that there was a sign outside which said the bath for men was being constructed and there was only a temporary bath for them at that time. As Rintero then commented that it was retreating while prostrating and she exclaimed that just because she wanted to be his disciple, it didn't mean she would follow him into a bath, to which he agreed that she wouldn't. So he wondered if what the heck was he doing, as there were easier ways to commit suicide, and of course, there was no way that she had bathed together with a man. And then he thought about her sayings, and after reaching a certain conclusion, he announced that she failed and he was just testing her because as a disciple, normally she needed to wash the back of her master, and if she couldn't even handle that kind of skinship, she failed as his disciple. So she then questioned about that kind of skinship, and he replied that she couldn't, and at that time she would have no choice but to give up. In the spur of the moment, she started scrubbing his back with the towel and declared that her family was full of men so she was used to seeing naked male bodies, as Rintero then realized that he completely dug his hole even deeper. Ayan further asked him if he would accept her as his disciple, and he pondered that he still hadn't broken his promise of not touching any girls as there was a towel between them so it was safe. 
He wondered that it was the worst situation that he had been in his whole life so he thought how he should escape from there. And suddenly he saw her through the mirror, and got so nervous that he stood up and his cloth got removed from her body. So he started running and declared that it was not good and he couldn't take it anymore as ten times he had seen emotus figures of females and one time he had shown emotus figures to females so overall his fortune for today was murderous. While Makoto was entering the bathing area with Keiko, she said to her to not bring food into the sanctuary or anything behind her. Both of them were completely nude, and Keiko commented that it was already 11 o'clock so she needed to eat something and she was going to wash that and place it at the school gates. As Rintero was moving outside, he realized that tiger women were ahead and wolves behind, so Makoto then questioned if there was a male, and their sight went to Ayan who was having tears in her eyes and she said that eels were scary. Afterwards, both the girls got mad and they started attacking Rintero as she then questioned Ayan what he did to her and she told him to stand up and clarified him as a piece of trash. She stated that they didn't even need to confirm it before finding out that he was garbage on which he replied to them to wait up as he was so worried and nervous because of a mixed bath with three high school girls and he really wanted to have a break. As he then closed his eyes and wondered that his chances to run were zero so he started concentrating for a clear mind and a silent and serene heart. But Makoto exclaimed that even if he closed his eyes, it was not too late and then Keiko started attacking him. Makoto mentioned that he had made two mistakes including one was dishonoring and another was defiling the bathhouse, but Rintero was so focused in his mind that he wondered reading his opponent's moves by feeling the stream of air and vibrations produced by breathing and movements that was the art of Koei Saugetsu. Makoto then declared that he was running on water and Keiko got so surprised to see him that she asked if he was a sage. He performed his skill of Gandao Suids that Keiko clarified was not bad and that was only the beginning. In the spur of the moment, both the girls fell down on the ground and they got completely wet as Makoto then mentioned that guy was no normal water and every droplet hit her vitals that she couldn't move. And then Ayan declared that besides there was another reason that Master used water to attack them so that he wouldn't harm them as she further added that he had a mentality which allowed him to care for his opponents and a physique which made it possible. As Rintero then pondered if he could open his eyes already and she claimed that he was an individual they couldn't even hope to beat. Nakoto commented that she would admit his strength, but she was still full of energy, and suddenly, the hot water came out in a huge volume from the pipe. As Rintero then thought if his move just destroyed the pipe at that time, he announced to watch out and all the hot water fell on the back of Ayan, so all of them started screaming at her to move from there as she would get burned, but she replied that she would be fine. Then Rintero stated that she should move away from there as it was dangerous. They shouted that it was enough and she should get away, on which she replied that she would never run for the sake of her friends. Hearing this, Rintero thought in his mind that it made him think until that time he had always only thought about himself and he had never done anything for the sake of someone else. As he then went towards the broken pipe and mentioned that doing something not for herself but for someone else was honestly amazing, and he was also a little jealous she had someone that made her think so, to which she agreed and he said that if she would accept him, he kind of wanted to help her. Ayan then got so amazed and Keiko commented that she could at least thank him for saving Ayan. So she then extended her thanks to him and declared that she was looking forward to learning a lot from him, as the other girls asked if she was okay and stated that she should be careful. Afterwards, Rintero looked at the melons of all three girls and clarified them as six enormous mountains. So Ayan mentioned that even if he was their master at that time, that didn't mean he could look vermin as she further asked if he didn't have any manners towards girls. And then he said that he would definitely get lost if he stayed there, so he dived into the water, and Makoto told him to come out as she would teach him some manners, on which he thought that he needed to transfer after all. The scene then shifted to the boys' room where Rintero thought that his daily life was full of dangers, feeling relief when the day ended and anxiety when another started. He was having a feeling that his self-defense instincts told him not to get up, and he was thinking why did he accept Keiko. Right after, she came to his bed and wished him good morning but as her melons came in front of his eyes, he covered himself with the sheet. He exclaimed that no more morning and no more anything as his head was so full of no notes that he didn't notice her. All three girls were standing there, and Ayan declared that she was hoping to learn from him starting that day so Keiko commented that the training or whatever they should get it over with and hit the cafeteria, on which Makoto replied to take a bath first as the day wouldn't start without a good bath as Keiko then told her that the day must start with breakfast, on which Makoto told her to take a bath to open her eyes as a Japanese person should be given, and then she declared that she was first and questioned if they didn't decide that with a push-up contest. 
So Aeon looked behind her and realized that Rintero wasn't there as he stuck himself with the wall of the room like a spider, and she was quite surprised that she asked where he was. As Keiko then mentioned that if she kept screaming, the disciplinary squad would come running to which Makoto agreed and said that it was like she thought as the disciplinary squad had been moving suspiciously lately, and they also had a period they were connected to her. And then Aeon announced to go as Keiko then asked if where to go so she answered that it must be training to search for the master. As a guy then questioned what the heck was that and Rintero came down after they went away from there. The scene then shifted to the classroom where Rintero was drinking the juice and he thought if he was still sitting there as the situation hadn't changed at all. And they even barged into his room earlier so he guessed that it would be best to transfer soon. And then someone tapped on his shoulder so when he looked behind, he realized that those were Kusuk and Tamao. As Kusuk questioned him if he forgot about them as there weren't that many freshman males to remember and told him that he was Kusuk as further mentioning that they lived in the same room and were classmates. On which Rintero replied that he was sorry as he had too much on his mind. So Kusuk commented that he surely was in the spotlight before that day and asked if that was that so early in the morning. And then Tamao stated to not tell him if he became the master of Sensoryu. Rintero then agreed and said that the stuff happened on which Kusuk commented that they were some of the rare men so they should get along and be friends. Hearing this, Rintero got so amazed and extended his thanks to him as Kusuk further asked him if he decided on a club already but as Rintero had no idea about it. Kusuk asked him if he could join there as though it was still only him and Tamao who were in the club. He told him that it was not time for class at that time so he should come and see. After a while, they came to a tree and Kusuk declared that it was a club where there are rare boys, and that school that had the girl ratio of 99% tried to find places to relax and they named the group as Ansokanachi Kenkyubu, as he then further added that for that time they had succeeded in researching 48 different spots, and then Rintero agreed with him and said that it was pretty relaxing out there. So Kusuk told him to have a look as an even better view of relaxing, the so-called oasis of one's heart could be seen over there, and when he looked at it, he realized that it was a changing room for the girls where the girls used to take off their clothes there. Kusuk then exclaimed that it was what he could call a superb view if anything, but Rintero got completely tensed and nervous and started yelling at them. So both the guys put their hands on his mouth and told him to not yell so loud there as they would notice them, and then all the girls started screaming to kill those boys. Kusuk said to Rintero that it was time for their trump but as all the girls there were so mad, one of them commented that their heads were too high and questioned who did they think that lord over there was, to which Kusuk answered by pointing towards Rintero that he was the master of Sensor Yuan and clarified him as Lord Rintero. For a moment, there was a bit of confusion among those girls, but soon they realized that it was of no concern for them so Kusuk stated that it was no good as he thought. Rintero then asked him what the heck was that and suddenly a girl hit her knee at the face of Tamao and clarified them as vermin. She asked what they thought they were doing and commented that it was like a yellow armband in character of wind which she further clarified as bad. So Kusuk ordered Rintero to hit the road and all of them started running from there. While Rintero was running, the girl came in front of them so he questioned if that girl wasn't behind them a moment ago, and they realized that they were surrounded by the girls from both sides. And then one of the girls claimed to not think that they could run away from them, so Kusuk commented to not tell him if they were the demonic disciplinary squad twins but Rintero had no idea about it. However, Kusuk was pretty right in his assumption that those girls were from the disciplinary squad of Nangokuren High School under which both the girls were assigned the rank of a chairwoman. One of the girls was Rumina and the other's name was Rorina, and Kusuk mentioned that they were not his normal disciplinary squad chairwomen but they were twins who were famous for being super sadistic, and there wouldn't be a speck of filth left where the twin winds blew. While both the girls were coming to them, Kusuk told Rintero to do something. Suddenly, she blew a punch at Rintero but he dodged her punch and hit Tamao, and he fell down on the ground. As again she tried to punch Rintero but he was so quick that he again protected himself, and that punch hit Kusuk straight away, so Kusuk then told Tamao to take that chance and run away. So when they started crawling, Kusuk's face got hit by something, and it was a girl who asked him if he was okay and told him that he needed to watch where he was going and as she held his hand, he felt so shy and felt her hand so soft. The girl told the other two girls that they were overdoing it to which both of them agreed and begged for her forgiveness. As Rintero had no idea about her and the girl commented that she was so sorry as the two of them always acted before they thought. The girl was the disciplinary squad president and her name was Tenkafu Asuna as she then realized that he was the gentleman who was asked to be Sensei Ryu's master on which he replied that his name was Rintero. And then she exclaimed that to think they acted harshly against such a renowned person and even to his friends. 
she would deeply apologize on their behalf. As Kayoyuka then stated that disciplinary squad president Asuna was just like the rumors said. She was so gallant on which Tamao added that she was so lovely as well. Asuna questioned the girls about what had happened there, to which they replied that those three guys were peeping. Rumina further commented that she was terribly sorry but if she could ask them to follow them to the gymnasium as they would carry out the investigation so Rintero then questioned about the investigation and Asuna replied that there was no need to worry as all they were going to do was have a small chat. Hearing this, both the guys got so excited that Kusuk declared that he would follow and chat all night long. So Rintero thought in his mind that they were so easily moved. The next scene then shifted to a big auditorium where a huge crowd of girls was there. Rintero was quite surprised to see the crowd, and Tamo asked if all of them were in the disciplinary squad. Afterwards, Rorina declared that they would start the investigation at that time, so all the criminals were to step forward, and all the people then started looking at them. Kusuk stated that they sure loved to stare at them, as Rorina then announced that their sin was peeping at the girls' dressing room, and according to the rules, written in the Nango Kiran student handbook, punishment for peeping was 60 days suspension, as further mentioning that during that time it was forbidden to leave the dorm. She stated either that or they would have to volunteer time working towards making their school more beautiful, so they had to work for 18 hours per day for 90 days. As Kusuk then got mad and he yelled to not mess with them as to not be able to see girls for 90 days, and Rintero wondered if being forbidden to leave sounded good. Rumina mentioned that normally they would have to accept either of those punishments, but it was also possible to choose special disciplinary squad support by donating, on which Rintero then questioned about special support, so she replied that present aid to the disciplinary squad was 10,000 yen per person. If they offered them 10,000 yen, then they could improve their innocence. Hearing this, both the guys got mad as Kusuk called them idiots and asked if they would have that kind of money then they could do whatever they wanted. As Rintero then thought in his mind that he was not going with the flow on that so the girls took the swords in their hands and told them to not get cocky. Both the guys started walking from there as Kusuk declared that all they wanted was money, and Tamao replied that he would go home. Both the chairwomen lifted the guys with their swords and asked if they would accept the special support of 10,000 yen. And then Rintero questioned if that was what they were doing so all the girls there started yelling at them and commented that they were criminals who disturbed discipline so they had to pay up and they should be thankful. They told them to get on their knees and clarified them as cockroaches and worms, as both the girls then threw the guys on Rintero and ordered them to pay the amount at that time. So Rintero then asked them if they were okay and further pondered that indeed it was true that they peaked but even so, that was overkill. Afterwards, both the girls moved ahead to attack on Rintero and Rorina declared that laws wouldn't protect criminals, but when they slashed their swords, Rintero dodged so high in the air to protect himself from their attack. He realized that attacking at the same time from both sides was a complete synchro, and they announced that nothing could stop the twin winds so he thought that to beat wind, he needed an even stronger gale which meant a storm. And then he made use of his skill of Rukja Koi Saugetsu, and made a tornado of winds which threw them on the floor and ruptured all their clothes. As Rorina then questioned if their wind was overpowered and Rintero took off his blazer to cover their bodies, he mentioned that no matter how strong the winds blow, his discipline wouldn't be disturbed and then Rorina was blushing when he went away from there. Afterwards Asuna came there and got surprised as she asked if what on earth had done that and asked both the girls if what exactly were they two doing. She went near them and commented to not tell her that they were trying to extort money again, to which they replied that they were terribly sorry. Rintero then questioned if that was unauthorized and all the other girls were so amazed to see Asuna and then she asked the guys if their bodies were alright or if the girls hurt them. So Kusuk then agreed and told her that they told them to pay 10 grand and Tama while crying further added that she said they would only talk and they would do nothing. After that, she put her hands on their cheeks and exclaimed that she was really sorry. She then further asked if they couldn't forgive her, to which Kusuk fully agreed and Tama mentioned that she looked best when she smiled. As she then replied that both of them were so kind and since she was very happy, she ordered everyone to gather around the stage. She took off her school dress and took a mic in her hands and then started singing, which made all the students so amazed and excited. But Rintero thought in his mind if disciplinary squad president, Asuna's real form was an idol. He wondered about Asuna, as if why was she dressed like that and if what the hell was happening. While Rintero was noticing his surroundings, he realized that things were heating up. Then he looked at Kusuk and Tamo, after which he thought if wasn't everyone acting a little strange. Both Kusuk and Tamo were looking too weird while they were applauding Asuna, so Rintero thought in his mind if he was the strange one there. 
It was Asuna's sweet chocolate disco which made both the guys so excited and high. Asuna then announced that at that time they were moving into merchandising and she ordered everyone to get up one by one. But all the guys had no idea what was happening. She declared about 86,000 yen in all and extended her thanks as always to Kusuk, on which he replied that if it was for her, then he could do 12 part-time jobs a week. Hearing this, she exclaimed that he was doing so much for her and if he worked that hard, she was going to fall in love, and then he told her that he was going to increase it to 16 times a week. Someone then announced about 67,000 yen in all, and Rintero commented that he could hear awesome amounts of money. And Kusuk asked Tamo about how much money he was heaving as he was having 300 yen with himself. And then he further questioned Rintero about how much money he had, as Tamo told him to try jumping a little. Afterwards, both the guys presented her a pick, and Kusuk said to her that he was sorry but that one was all the two of them could afford that time, as he further added that for some reason they were a little short today. So Tamo then mentioned that normally there would be over 2 millions, and then Asuna went close to the pick and kissed it, as she then claimed that it was okay as she was very happy about their feelings. As both the guys then got so high after listening to her, and the girl announced for the next person, on which Rintero stated that he also didn't have any money. Whereas Kusuk and Tama were fighting with each other for the pick, as Kusuk told him that it was his pick as he had 100 more than him. So Tama replied that he got it and he should at least let him to lick it first. After a while, the girl called out Rarina and Rumina and whispered about something in their ears. So the girl then declared that the product selling ended there and ordered everyone to disperse at once. In the spur of the moment, the auditorium got empty at once, and then Aang came running as she said that she was too late, and she couldn't catch them red-handed that time either. And then she noticed that Rintero was standing there, so she asked him if he was there, to which he replied that it was nothing much and the disciplinary squad caught them. She then questioned him if he was alright, or if they took his money, and if he fell for Asuna, to which he answered that she was always a little too close as he was okay, but those two completely fell for her. Then Kusu questioned why there was no one there and if where Asuna was. While Ian was describing the disciplinary squad president, Rintero declared that he already knew about it, and then he ran towards the guys announcing to them that it was all part of the president's plan, to which Kusuk agreed and stated that someone sure had planted some good melons in that body. Rintero then denied to him and told that he was being serious there, and they shouldn't take it for granted. Hearing this, both the guys got a little angry as Kusuk questioned him if all he wanted was to have Asuna only for himself, and Tamau exclaimed that Asuna was all his own only. Rintero then got tensed and he denied by asking for the reason, but both the guys while fighting for Asuna went away from there. Kusuk mentioned that he would leave for a trip to earn some money, and Tamau stated that he needed to find some work. Afterwards, Rintero was feeling bad as all his memories were reflecting in front of his eyes. Ayan told him to not feel down about that, and then he asked her if he had to go to meet that president. She replied that she believed it was the disciplinary squad room, so he then declared that he would go and have a little chat with her, and she requested to let her show him where it was. All this scene was being observed by Kusuk and Tamau as he then realized that they were going to the disciplinary squad room and Tamau added that he wouldn't let him steal a march. The next scene then shifted to the corridor where Asuna entered into a classroom and Rintero with Ayan were running towards her, but as soon as they entered the room they realized that there was nobody. So Rintero then commented that he was sure that she came to that classroom, and she clarified it as completely weird. Then Rintero started focusing on a clear mind and a silent and serene heart. He was concentrating on all five senses for hearing, and as he analyzed the whole room with his senses, he found a hidden door inside the room. After that, he decided to go in there, and Kusuk stated that they would go too. The scene switched to the president's room where Asuna was having the conversation with her chairwoman. She announced that everything was as expected and increasing their funds and influence were progressing without a problem. The whole plan was that firstly, Rumina and Rarina harshly attack and she would kindly help as the combination of them, three sisters, was making others kneel so well it was almost funny. She further added that they made contact with the male thought to be the master of Senseryu, so they would without a doubt make him kneel to them as well. Right after, Asuna had a call on her phone where someone asked if that was the case and clarified her work is too good. She replied that the words were so kind and she extended her thanks for that. As she then told both the girls that next they would make the master of Senseryu, Rintero, kneel before them as the value of that man was tens of times that of those other pitiful students. And then suddenly Rintero came there and declared that it would never happen. Asuna then questioned why he was there, and he replied that as expected of Sensei Ryu's master he would have her explain everything to Kusuk, Tamau, and other students as well. 
Hearing this, she asked what he meant, so he answered that there was no need to play dumb, and she replied to not be so angry as she was so scared and shivering as well. So Rintero then got a little nervous, and the aunt told her that it was enough. Both of them looked at each other with angry expressions, and Kusu clarified that it was a strange atmosphere. Asuna got completely enraged and she yelled at Ayan that it was all because of her that she couldn't influence Rintero, and she was not fit to be called a dragon so that title should be for herself. She called out for Rurina and Rumina and ordered them to use the skill of three bodies, one soul. But Rintero got so nervous as cleavage was happening while it was three against one, and he wondered if he couldn't look at any of them. They used the skill of Fang of Triple Wind to make an attack on Ayan, but as they threw chains to catch her, Asuna realized that she was not there. Then Ayan told her that to be crowned as a dragon she would need resolve. She declared that dragons didn't exist alone and for the sake of her comrades, who believed in her. The feelings of those comrades one by one would become her scales and give shape to her final form as further mentioning that the name of dragon meant that she had to carry on the feelings of her comrades. She questioned if she had the resolve and attacked on the wall near Asuna's head which then completely cracked the wall, and it was the strength of Senseryu. And then Asuna started crying as she declared that all she wanted was to be recognized by her, but all because she got the name of a dragon even though she was just a freshman, in which Ayan replied that she was so sorry, as Rintero thought in his mind that she wasn't already damn strong and if she really needed a master. Afterwards, Ayan told him to not worry as she would make sure that Asuna explained everything, to which Rintero then agreed and extended his thanks to her. Suddenly, Asuna jumped from behind him, and as he looked at her, she announced that if she made him a hostage, even Ayan wouldn't be able to do a thing. So he then realized that it was no good because he couldn't evade in time, and he thought if her melons would be the reason for his death. But in the very next second, Kusuk and Tamo grabbed her from behind and made her fall on the ground as they further asked Rintero if he was okay. And then Rintero got so happy and extended his thanks to them for saving himself from her attack. Kusuk then declared that he didn't know if she was such a witch and further told him that they were sorry. Rintero was having tears in her eyes to see his friends helping him so he extended his thanks again to them for real. After that, the disciplinary squad was disbanded and every penny they had collected was returned. Though there were still hardcore Asuna fans among them and even Rintero got himself a new fan. The next scene then shifted to the tree under which all the three guys were standing. There Kusuk announced that he himself was the elder brother, Tamao was a middle brother and Rintero was clarified as a little brother. All of them cheered with their drinks and he declared that the three of them their pledge the eternal pledge of stepbrothers in the name of Nango Kuren. They named their pledge as the Pledge of Virginity as he exclaimed that even if the day they were born was different, the day they lose their virginity was the same. Right after, Ayan came there and asked if they finally started their training, as someone then told Tamo if they played their cards right then he might be able to lick Ayan. The scene then shifted to a girl who was standing on a bridge and a few of the girls came there to tell her about Asuna that she had lost. The girl mentioned that as they thought, they shouldn't underestimate the power of Sensoryu and also that man who was supposed to be her master. Afterwards, Ransoryu took out her phone and deleted the contact of Asuna and she commented that Asuna's defeat was all within calculations and she had never expected anything from her. Ransoryu was one of the three dragons and her mate stated that she guessed Asuna wasn't part of their army from the beginning. So another girl then questioned if to beat Kuzuryu and Sensoryu how they should move. As the girl then answered that only a dragon could fight with another dragon either that or someone who had powers equal to a dragon. To which Ransoryu added that it meant a tiger. And then the other girl asked about the tiger and the girl who was once called the strongest of Nango Kuren. She exclaimed to not tell her that she was coming back to which she agreed. And that girl's name was Hate and Komeru who was among the various beasts that could shake the school. Later on, while Rintero was sitting in the classroom, the teacher commented that youth was the most important part of being a student, and studies are just extra. In a short period of time, Rintero realized that he was being watched by Ayan in each activity wherever he went, so he then declared that he got it and they should get started with her training. Hearing this, Ayan extended her thanks to him and stated that she was looking forward to it. The scene then shifted after school in Nangokuren 10th Land Sports Field where Rintero was standing with Ayan and he exclaimed to get started. But a few seconds later, he got confused about what to say at that time, so he then wondered that he had never taught anyone before, so he didn't know what to do, and then he asked her what she wanted to learn again, to which she replied that it was the secret of his strength, and then he mentioned that the secret of his success was called Ryuya Koi Saugetsu, or in other words, self-control over her mind and soul. 
He exclaimed that she must clear her mind and keep her heart silent and serene. So she repeated the same thing again and he agreed by saying that she needed to calm her heart, and once she found peace in both mind and body, she would be able to project the techniques of Shinrabanchu. Afterwards, Rintero focused on a clear mind and silent and serene heart to flip in the air so high by hopping over the rock. Looking at him, Aeon started clapping for him and he declared that the technique required the balance of both mind and body so they should firstly start with the body, to which she then agreed. He suggested that she should try climbing up and down ten times while pointing towards a rock, on which she replied that she would do it. After a while, when she was climbing up the rock, Rintero's sight went below her skirt which made him very nervous and tense. He exclaimed that her life would be in danger if she underestimated training and after reaching the top of the rock, Rintero mentioned that there were five more to go for it, to which she replied that it was her fifth and that the place was much safer. Rintero's sight then went to her chest and he got completely nervous, so he said that there were two mountains at the top and a tiny piece of cloth at the bottom, and then he ran away from there by saying that it was too much for him. The scene then shifted to the city side location where Rintero was walking and he wondered that becoming someone's master was something he couldn't handle, and besides he was with a girl for a long time who knew what might happen. While he was walking, his sight went to other girls on the road which made him a little frustrated so he then came to a game land. When he entered the center, he felt so nostalgic as he thought that he would go to those places because there weren't many girls there. In the spur of a moment, his sight went to a game which he clarified as a new version of Bacho Bacho. He mentioned that he was pretty addicted to it back in middle school, and they called him Bacho Bacho Rintero back then. Afterwards, he decided that he should check out, so he went near the game where someone announced that it was a 20 chain combo, and the other questioned if it wasn't a 15 chain combo the maximum possible, and the guy answered that incredibly his best was a 15 chain combo. Right after, it was the next guy who asked why he didn't try to which the other guy denied by saying that he couldn't beat her so the guy questioned if there were no more challengers. And then Rintero came to the game and someone announced that there was a hero. The game was quite competitive as the people there commented that both of them were pretty fast and it was an even match to which someone added that the challenger was being pushed. Looking at this, Rintero wondered if the player was really good, so he started focusing on a clear mind and silent and serene heart, as someone then exclaimed that the challenger just upped his speed and it was such an incredible fight. The other guy then got completely surprised to see Rintero's skills as he asked if a chain combo at the same time and a draw or if that was even possible. After a while, Rintero's sight went to a red hamster and someone called out it as Keto so when Rintero followed it, he realized that it was a girl and he thought that she was still a kid, so he guessed that it was okay and it should be safe. The girl told him that he was pretty good and he really scared the crap out of her and not only that his attitude changed in the middle of their fight so she further questioned if why didn't they try out some other games as well. And then they went to play different games where she got very crazy in some of the games. Both of them were so happy to play so many games and then while they were walking through the streets, the girl commented that Bacho Bacho was her favorite game so she was pretty confident but it had been a while since she wasn't able to win. Hearing this, Rintero got shocked as he asked about being a while, and stated that she sure was pretty good at games so he then answered that she played 20 hours a day. And then Rintero pointed towards something and exclaimed that those straps on her cell phone were the game characters if he was right on which she replied that it wasn't a cell phone and then she showed him that those were the video games which she was carrying with herself. As Rintero got amazed to see those game machines and he declared that she sure liked them a lot so she answered that she also uploaded some of her game plays into a website and it was a site called Kamitazen, but since he had no idea about it, she mentioned that speaking of Kamitazen, it contained game okay videos of players with expert skills and she learned her bacho bacho skills from watching those videos and one day she would become the god of the gaming world. He replied that it was a pretty big goal and he heard of a similar phrase somewhere, just after some of the bad guys came there and one of them called them out as a lovey-dovey couple and the other guy then mentioned that it was their goddamn reserve bench so he questioned why the hell were they sitting on it without their permission. Rintero then whispered in her ears that it was the DQN and they were those kinds of people who were so bad so she questioned what he was saying. And then one of the guys asked if what the hell were they talking about or if he was mocking them so the other guy announced that they would kill them and clarified them as goddamn bastards. Rintero stated that they were really sorry and they would leave at that time to which she added that she didn't want to leave from there and suddenly another girl asked about those brats and clarified that those were so annoying. Like as usual his sight went to their melons and he ran so far that the guy told her that it looked like her boyfriend knew when to quit. And then all the guys went to the bench where the girl was sitting and he told her to move from there but she was so strong that she threw them away 
and punched straight away at the guy's faces. Looking at her moves, Rintero got completely surprised as that was the street fighter attack combo, and he clarified that she was so strong. She threw them out in the river and Rintero was completely shocked as he had no idea how it happened so the girl mentioned that the DQN wasn't that strong after all. Hearing this, he wondered who that girl was and suddenly, Aan came from behind and said that she had completed all 10 rounds and she wanted him to tell her what she did next. So Rintero got confused and he clarified that it was a good job so she asked what was the next training and suddenly the hamster jumped at her melons and the girl grabbed her melons while trying to catch the hamster. So Aan then noticed that it was a red-haired hamster and the girl had twin-tailed hair. And then she questioned if she was Hayden Komeru and she replied that she was having a nice rack that she got there. Ayan got so surprised that she asked why she was with the master, and she answered that she was kinda nervous. Right after, some of the high school girls came there, and Ransuryu declared that they had come to pick them up. Ayan asked her when did she stop behaving like that, so she exclaimed that they were there to pick up the claw and fang dragon slayer. The girl thought in his mind that Rintero was surrounded again by girls, and he was trapped between the tiger and the dragons, so he sensed more trouble coming his way. As Rintero was seeming nervous, he commented that big girls, little girls, and at that time, glasses girls, which meant everywhere were just girls that he could see. While thinking about all of it, he bit his tongue. Ransui Ryu announced to Saunga of the Dragon Slayer that they were there to pick her up, and Aen asked if they were there to pick her up. Rintero was feeling the situation to be tense as he wondered about glasses, eyeglasses, and goggles spectacles, and thought if that was the eyeglasses anthem. As Ransuryu moved her hand forward and stated that at that time as agreed, Meru was to fulfill the covenant of Hagen. Since she was being caught between the dragons and the tiger, that was a sticky situation for her. All the girls were standing in front of Meru, and Rintero pondered that if things got dangerous then he would just grab all their eyeglasses and run away while they couldn't see. But suddenly he realized that eyeglasses were part of their faces which equated the equation of eyeglasses were girls too. So he thought if that meant he couldn't touch or hit eyeglasses as well. In the spur of the moment, a large crowd of crows came in the sky, and the other girl commented that there were way too many of them, to which the other girl agreed. Then she told them to look as they were lining up in a row, and she stated that they were coming from the school. While they all were looking at the sky, she announced that there was something coming, on which the other girl asked if it was a cat, so she denied by saying that it was not a cat. She asked her if that was some kind of crows returning the favor thing and if how did she come up with a car and returning the favor anyway. As Rintero then also questioned what that was, the girl came out to be the black crow Aaron, and after looking at her, all other girls started discussing about her. They commented if she was the black crow, the information specialist, while the other girl declared that she was the girl who hardly ever showed herself to others. As Rintero's sight went to her legs and he wondered about a high-cut slit and smooth skin, he started focusing on a clear mind to counter her gorgeous legs. As Aaron then went to Ransuryu and whispered in her ears that she was in her way, so she asked her what she meant by saying that she was in her way, and she answered that if he wanted to go through them she should just go through it but she was not to expect from them that they would let her through. Suddenly in the very next second, she came to them by moving her body so quickly through the crowd, and all the other girls got completely scared as they asked when did she come there. And then Aaron went to Rintero and lifted her leg in the air, which made him completely nervous, and he thought that it was how he said dangerous panties in just two milliseconds. As Ransuryu then asked her why she was there, and then she went to Meru and whispered in ears that it was a long time no see, to which she then agreed and declared that she made another set of clothes, and they were of such high quality so she told her to make a set for cosplay next time. Afterwards Rintero questioned A and if who was she as she looked like a model who had a pretty dramatic entrance on which she replied that she wasn't aligned with any of the dragons just like Meru, and nobody knew who she was as she was really mysterious, and all she knew about her was that she loved cosplaying. Hearing this, he thought that there sure were lots of girls in the world, and things got even worse. He realized that a 10 square meter area was completely filled with girls, and Ransuryu announced Eren to step aside as she was not done there yet. But she was whispering something in Meru's ears, which made her realize that the guy was Rintaru himself. So she then held her hands and said sorry to her as she further added that she wouldn't break her promise, but whether it be games or life she wanted to enjoy it fully. She pointed out Rintero and stated that they would pair up with him. She then asked him if that was okay for him, on which he asked what she meant, and she answered that he was pairing with her, and they were partners. So he then asked what did she mean by partners or if that was like Akaiyusen and further questioned about partnering with a kid or if that was about a game. And then she declared that she was 18 years old, a third-year Nangokuren student, 
and he could tell by her bone-filling appeal. Rintero then smiled because he was not in his own senses and he exclaimed that he saw 18 years old and that meant she was two years older than him. And it was no wonder for him that she had that kind of goal in life even though she was just a kid. Then he came to his senses and realized that she was really 18 years of age. He wondered that there was no way there could be no way but there was a way there, and he ended up in a lot of confusion. As she then declared that it was kinda late so they should play again tomorrow and both Aaron and Meru went away from there. Then Anne commented that she was cancelling that day's training as she needed to call a meeting at that time. In the spur of the moment, Rintero realized that all the girls went away from there and there was no one else with him. He wondered that all he got out of that was that his situation was getting worse and it really, really bit as he further thought if there wasn't a salesman out there offering a solution to his problems and he reflected his desire that he didn't want to go back to school. The next scene then shifted to a different place where Meru was practicing with some other girl. When both of them hit their punches at each other, the girl mentioned that her punch hurt like hell, to which she replied that her punches hurt her too. She tried to attack her and asked how dare she show herself in front of her, so she answered Kako that it had been a long time no see, and she said to her to not tell her that she had forgotten. While they were fighting, Kako questioned what she did to her eye, and when she waved her sword, Meru jumped so high in the air that she commented that she moved like a monkey. She told her that it was alright as she looked really good with that eye patch, and she yelled that she forced her to wear it for a whole year as a penalty for losing that game, to which she asked if she actually liked it. The girl was slashing Steel Empress, and she wondered if she shouldn't have accepted that Mentos Cola chugging match, and then Meru grabbed her melons and questioned what was that or if her melons grew again, and further added that she was getting left behind. And then they started fighting once again. So Kusuk mentioned that it was a piece of cloth that was filled with their hopes and dress which Tamau clarified as panties. Right after, Kako hit both the guys with her weapon. And then Meru wished good morning to Rintero, so he then realized that it was the girl from yesterday. And when she was going to slash her sword at Rintero, he held her sword with his hand. And she thought that it was like a cup of coffee to wake someone up and it was a barehanded sword catch. As Aeon then questioned if he was alright, and he replied that he almost had a sword for breakfast, so she commented that she was sorry about that and wondered if that guy wasn't the Sensei Ryu's master. At that time, all the girls were gazing at each other, and she announced that it was Ada M and asked if everybody was ready, on which Meru answered that she and Rintero were partners, so she was going to stay beside him, and she waved his arm towards his arm. But he lifted his arm again and again, so she asked why wouldn't he let her grab his arm, and he replied that it was because of personal circumstances. And then, she started attacking him, but as he was so quick, everyone was surprised to see him. And then Meru wondered what was with that incredible speed, and he thought that they were all heavy blows so the pressure alone was cutting his hair. She yelled if it was because of her melons that he was thinking. Even if they linked arms, her melons weren't big enough for him to feel. Then she clarified that he was a titty monster lover just like any other guy, to which he denied by saying that he was 100% not like that, and he literally swore that he was not like that. So she then called him a liar, and he told her that it was the truth. She replied that his eyes weren't serious and he was joking. As he then exclaimed that he was serious, she told him to prove that to her, so he asked how he could prove that. She replied by fighting with her. Right after, the red hamster jumped at the rock, and Kako mentioned that it should be interesting. The danger tiger that the dragons feared sprung into action. She said to him to not be so easy on her, and he thought, how did it come to that? While she was running to him, someone put her hand in front of his face, and Meru realized that it was Ransweyu who told her to stop. And then she asked her if why she was cock-blocking her action scene to which she replied that she wouldn't allow any more of her selfish actions. As Rintero then thought in his mind that he must run away, Meru exclaimed that interrupting a fight was really rude. She replied that he was not the one she was supposed to fight. She mentioned not to forget about the Covenant of Hagen, and Meru answered that the Covenant had nothing to do with her fight with Rintero. So Ransweyu commented that she just wanted to see how strong he was, and she further questioned if she really thought that she wouldn't see through her plan. And then Meru clarified that she was as sharp as always, so she announced that she quit. As Rintero thought in his mind that too many things had been happening recently, maybe he should start offering Shinto prayers. While Ransweyu was gazing at her, he realized that a deadly gun was pointed at him. Two of the girls presented the swords to her, and she took them out from their covers. She declared that she would dispose of him at that time and called him a troublemaker. Hearing this, he wondered if it meant that he was in trouble, and Kako thought about what she thought she was doing. So Meru then questioned her as to why she was the one fighting him, and she replied that all she required was her, and everything else was dispensable, especially that man. 
as she then agreed and told her to finish him, so he thought that his life might end with that phrase. But Ian declared that if she wanted to fight Master, she must defeat his disciple first, and Meru states that it got pretty interesting, so Rintero then commented that she caused all that as the other girl stated that at that time that was what she called a big breakfast, and Kako exclaimed that it was alright between dragons and Meru always messed things up. While Ayan was standing in front of Ransweryu, she told her to step aside or she would dispose of them, and she replied that she had no intention of running away from her own fate. So the fight between both the girls had started, and Rintero mentioned that they were really going at it. Both of them performed their special moves at each other, as Kako then commented that Senseryu was going top gear right away, and she questioned if Ransweryu was a slow starter to which the other girl denied by saying that she wanted to savor it and she didn't want to take a huge bite of her meal at the start. As Ayan was so quick that Ransweryu wondered that her movements were so fast and she was blocking all the attacks, and Rintero thought in his mind that she was like a flowing stream. Afterwards Meru declared that he was pretty good and told Yamada to give him a cushion but as he had no idea if what she was talking about. So she claimed that in short, Senseryu was speed, Kuguryu was power, and Ransweryu was technique like he said Ransweryu was just like water. She mentioned that her defensive style constantly changed and adapted like the flow of water, and her attacking style was as powerful as pressurized water cutting through a diamond. As he then commented that Aan's movements were a bit slower than what he saw the last time, and she told him that she hadn't seen Senseryu at full throttle yet. In the spur of the moment, Ayan started moving with more speed, and Meru announced that she had increased her speed. Within a second, she created her different images around Ransui Ryu, and Rintero clarified that it was impressive as using raw speed to attack from all directions. Her opponent wouldn't be able to fight back because she had no choice but to defend against all the attacks, as further mentioning that the problem of using two swords is the lack of defense in the weaker hand, so if that kept up. As Meru then stated, he would break through the defense of the weaker hand, is what he was thinking, and she further added that Reno couldn't be defeated that easily, on which he asked her for the reason, and he replied to watch and learn. While they were fighting with their swords, Rintero wondered that both her hands were still at it, with all the attacks she was taking. Her weaker hand would eventually slip up, and then he realized that she was ambidextrous, and that was her partner. Reno could unleash her full strength with her right hand and could do the same with her left hand as well and that was the foundation of Reno's techniques. Just after Ransweryu made the use of another skill, Rintero thought if that was a thunderbolt. All the people there were quite surprised to see her moves, and in a short time, all the clothes of Ayan got ruptured. So Rintero started feeling nervous, and then Meru commented that she was hurt so she was taking her to the infirmary as it was for the best. The other girl then asked Rintero if he agreed or not, to which he replied that he guessed so Meru started running and told him to go with them. Tamo questioned what happened at that time, to which Kusuk replied that lots of girls were there so there was no need to follow them, and then the other girl commented on how kind it was and asked if she held back or not. She further questioned her if she hadn't heard that lions used their full strength even when they hunted rabbits, so Ransweryu then answered that she knew. But if the rabbit was too small, a lion would lose its motivation. Hearing this, she asked if she was waiting for her meal to grow up and commented that she was so clever that she thought she was losing her touch as she really was a dragon after all. And then both the girls went away by saying to give her brain a rest once in a while, and Kusuk realized that there was no one except themselves. The next scene then shifted to the infirmary where Meru said sorry to Ayan as all that happened because she wanted to try fighting with Rintero, on which she replied that it was okay as she was an opponent that she would be facing eventually after all. As Rintero then questioned if why did she want to fight with him in the first place, so she answered that it was to fulfill the covenant of Hagen but since both of them had no idea she explained that it was a year ago back when Kaiyuka and she were second years and Reno was a first year. The situation there was way more serious back then but there was one person who came very close to supremacy at Nangokura, Gentryu Ren who was Ransui Ryu Reno's big sister. She mentioned that she came to that school as an outsider, but as she really enjoyed fighting, she thought she would find worthy opponents there, and after defeating all the first years, it soon became obvious that she would be facing Ren who was said to be the strongest of all. The scene then switched to a year ago when Ayan was having a fight with Ren and both of them were standing in front of each other. As Ren then noticed some sparkling thing in her pocket, she asked her if that was the golden Trichy, to which she agreed. And then Rintero questioned about Trichy if it was the one from that shoot them up game, so she agreed by saying that it was such a godly game. She asked her if she liked it, the game she meant, 
and she replied that she didn't hate it as it was just that the game was really hard, but that was what made it so good she guessed, and the Trichy characters were kinda creepy but it looked kinda cute up close. She further asked Anne if that wasn't the golden Trichy which she could only get by winning the world tournament, as further mentioning that she never thought that she would get to see it, but it was not that it made her happy though, so Meru then exclaimed that she really loved it. And then Ren states that it would be a shame if that thing got scratched, so he replied that she would postpone their fight for that time, and she could show her that thing again some other time. From then on, Ren and she became really good friends, and they had a very good time while playing with those things. Afterwards, she declared that Ren had that really weird habit that once she got even the tiniest rip on her clothes, she stripped and changed immediately, as she then started laughing and questioned how many clothes she had. Hearing this, Rintero wondered if she was a dangerous hero wrist, and it was a good thing that she was no longer there. And then she commented that some time later Reno came to that school, and by then she and Ren had divided the school between themselves. And on the day before Ren's graduation, Ren told her to settle that once and for all, to which she agreed and declared that they should take that fight seriously then. After having the fight, when they both got tired, Ren asked her if she could do a favor, so she questioned if what was that, and she replied that it was about Reno her little sister, on which Meru questioned if she commanded the first years. Ren commented that she was very devoted to her ever since she was a little girl, and she always looked up to her even during her fighting days always, but all she cared about at that time was power. She declared that her goal was to rule Nangokuren, so the two of them would eventually battle one day, but when she was all alone after reaching the top, the view from up there wasn't worth anything. She told her that she learned after she met her, but she would be gone by next year, so she wanted her to understand the lesson she learned back then. And then she gave her something by saying that if she accepted her request then she should take that as proof of their pact. On which she replied that if she wasn't the one asking, she wouldn't be interested at all. Afterwards, Meru wrapped that thing with her hand and clarified that it was very well that she would fulfill her request. Hearing this, she told her that she would give her necktie as well, on which she asked her for the reason and she answered that it was for her graduation, so she told her that it was so lame, as Ren then took off her clothes which made Meru tense that she asked her if she was an exhibitionist or what, and then while three of them were standing under a tree, Ren exclaimed that after she graduated, Meru would provide her strength, and she told Reno that she felt pleased to meet her, as Ren further mentioned that together they would achieve their goal of ruling Nangokuren, but then she stated that she didn't think she understood. She exclaimed that not even she was able to achieve dominance at Nangokuren, and that was because she was never able to defeat Hate and Komeru, on which Dini replied that it was not just about domination, as by winning she would for the first time ever be able to surpass her, and she would do whatever it took to make that possible. And that was all there was to know about the Covenant of Hagen, as Rintero then thought in his mind that he didn't think Meru and Miss Four Years had such a connection so Meru then asked Ayan if she could borrow Rintero for a while, so she replied that she really didn't need her permission. And while both of them were walking through the bridge, she told him that the reason she wanted to fight with him was because she thought that it would be a lot of fun, to which he agreed. He thought that it wasn't her life on the line, and she further declared that she wanted to see if he was a worthy successor. 